I think I put, there's a creamer I bought right there on the counter. Okay, fellas, we are continuing our Yehavedat Yud. Yehavedat, we are in book one, and now Siman 14. And the question is, like I said downstairs, Am I allowed to use machine-made shimura matzah? It's still shimura, but it's machine-made, not man-made fully. Can I use it for the seder on Pesach? It's cheaper. Shimura means it was watched. We'll, we'll tell you in one second. Or do I have to pay extra for 100% complete man-made matzah? Okay, so let's see first what is Shimura. Masech Pesachim, page 40. Yemara says, the Pasuk says, Pasuk in Pashat Bo, you have to watch the Masot. What does that mean you have to watch the Masot? You have to physically watch the, the grains to make sure, not when they're connected to the ground. Obviously, every grain in the ground, rain, it rains on the grain. You can't, that's okay. While it's connected to the ground, it can get wet. We're talking about post-cut. Once you cut the grains, now you have to wash them. So it's a machloket. When do I have to watch them? From when they cut it or when they grind it, like I said downstairs. Or maybe other times. We hold, it's really try to go all the way, and we watch it from the time it was cut from the ground. So they pick a nice dry day. They can't, if, they, if it's a rainy day outside, they're not going to cut matzah, for pe, uh, uh, matzah, cut wheat for Pesach. They pick a nice dry day. All the grains are dry. They cut the, the wheat. They take it in special bags and make sure no water comes in contact with it. Usually in Commercial wheat oh, these days, they wash everything down. No, they don't wash it down. They have to grind it all dry. Also, the equipment. Usually, you go to these factories in between runs, they wash the equipment, the metal, all the machinery is hosed down with the water. No, we can't do that. All dry equipment because if water touches it, the second water touches the grain, it's going to start the fermentation, the, the uh, what's called rising. And then the clock is starting. And that's it. It's going to be hametz. We have to, from the minute it touches water, we have to rush and cook it within 18 minutes, cooked. Otherwise, it's not shimura matzah. It's hametz. Not only shimura, it's hametz. Okay? So we have to watch the matzah, make sure no water comes in contact with it. Now, so Hagaon writes, okay, so you have a matzah factory. By the way, if you haven't seen a video, maybe after this you would, I'll post a nice YouTube video they have inside a matzah factory. It's amazing what they do in there. And so I want to save on labor. I don't want to hire Jewish guys, expensive Jewish guys. So I'm going to hire guys from Home Depot, like everybody does, right? Why can't I bring Home Depot guys, have them do all the matzah, and I'll just watch them and make sure everything's misudat. I'll be mashkiah. Says no, it doesn't work. The person that's making the, the dough, the person that's making the matzah, has to be not only Jewish, has to be a Jewish person that's hayav in mitzvot. It can't even be a 12 year old kid. The writes, We're talking now about matzah shimura. The matzah shimura is to fulfill. The Pesach Seder Mitzvah, Matzah. So we're going to have to differentiate this. Everybody has to know this. You don't need Matzah Shimura the whole week. You need Matzah Shimura for the Seder Pesach, for the, the first night in Israel. Pes Matzah. And for the second night also for us in, in America. Other than that, none of this is applying. We're talking specifically about the Matzah because it's a Mitzvah from the Torah to each Shimura Matzah the first night. And we have two nights. So two nights here. But the other times in the week, you can eat any matzah, just can't be hametz. We got the difference? You don't have to spend $40 a pound for all the whole week of Pesach, just for the first seder and the second seder here. Okay. Okay. 
אם משהו חלק שותה וקטן את המסע, even if you have a gadol watching over the kid, it's not kosher. For שמור המסע, for the first night. It's kosher מסע, but it's not kosher for שמור המסע, okay? ולפי זה, according to this נדאה, it seems, שאין יוצאים מידי חובת אכילת מסע בלילה הראשון של פסח, במצע מכונה. If a 12-year-old kid can't do the matza, even if I'm watching him and I'm telling him, do this, and he does it, it's not kosher for shimura matza. I have to be careful. It's kosher. It's not shimura matza for the seder. Then how could a machine be any different than a 12-year-old kid? The machine has no brain. Instead of telling the kid do it, I push the button and the machine does it. Or voice activation. Maybe Alexa can make matza. Yeah? The same thing as telling a kid. The, the kneading and the preparation and the baking of the dough, it's all automatic. You're not doing it. It has to be done by a person, by an uh, adult Jewish person has to do it. A machine should be just like a minor. A machine should just be like a kid doing it. And therefore, the Rabbi Shlomo Kluger writes that a machine matzah would not be kosher for shmora matzah. It's kosher matzah, but not for shmora. But the other aga on hanetzi v'sefer haimek she'ela she'evi divra haimed Moshe she sobe she stam asiyat matzah l'shma k'mo kadoshim. Rak t'chila s'ich l'ma p'pidu sh'osim l'shma v'chalak al-mun nesiv. Okay? Fine. Let's get that. ולכן, מצה מכונה איננה חשובה יותר מעשיית סתם מצה, ואף שהלוחץ על הכפתור, even though the guy is pushing the button, והעלת המכונה that makes the machine go, עומד בפילוש לשם מצה מצווה. even though when I, before I press the button, I say, לשם מצה מצווה, this is for the מסיק, I'm telling everyone right now, it's for the מצווה, מצווה, of מצה, no, אין זה more ill, it shouldn't help. מפני שאמירתו חלה רק הכוח הראשון של המכונה, because you're only, affecting the first push of the button. But now the machine's going to go for the next 20 minutes. That's not on your push. Your push is for the first second, maybe. Your kavana, that it should be for the, mitzvah, for the mitzvah, cannot work on the whole run of the machine. After you finish pressing the button, the, machine, the machine's going. Like we said in Hulin, and we, we read this halakha I don't know, a few months ago, You remember what I, when I spoke about Lo'alein, or God forbid, someone wants to murder someone, should never do it, but someone wants to murder someone with a water wheel? Do you remember this halakha we did? So he has a guy he wants to kill, right? Bad person, and he doesn't want to go to Bet-Din as a murderer, and because he'll get killed. So he's a clever invention. Remember this, the water wheel? No? So he says, he takes his guy, he ties him to the table, and then he says, I have a wheel with a blade on the end of it. I'm going to pour water. The wheel is going to spin around, chop the guy's head off. Hey, I didn't do it. The wheel did it. I didn't do it. The water wheel did it. And so the Gemara Holin says, actually, it's, it's murder, but it's not punishable murder. It's a kind of a loop. You shouldn't do it. Hashem will take care of the guy. But you didn't, it's the wheel, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not my action that did it. And so the same thing like the water wheel should be the same thing like my, the machine. I pressed the button, very nice, but you didn't do it. The machine did it. Okay, and so Linyan Shechita, the same water wheel question, besides for murder, murder is the ugly one, but you can also ask the same question for Shechita. I want to cut the neck of an animal so I can eat a hamburger. Do I have to press it or can I have this machine? Or I have a wheel, you know, like the old fashioned spinners, a, like a bicycle pedal attached to a wheel with a blade on it. And when I do this, it cuts the animal. Next, I keep pedaling the thing. All the animals next get cut on the blade from my bicycle pedals. If it's the water, it's re once, once removed from you, so it's called a gadma, which is not your direct action. And therefore, the shahita would not be kosher if it's with a water wheel. If it's a pedal wheel, it might be kosher, because a pedal is literally every time you press the pedal, you're making the thing spin around. Okay. Now, he says, check Shohan Aruch. Shohan Aruch says, the water wheel is not kosher shechita. Then he has a star, and he says over here, however, if you look at a different Shohan Aruch, Siman 7, in Yoredea, he writes, 
יכול אדם לקבוע סכין בגלגל של אבן או של עץ, you can attach a blade, a knife to a wheel, ומסבב הגלגל בידו או ברגליו, and you're spinning the, the lever with your hand or your feet. ונותן שם סבל הבהמה, you put the neck of the animal or off or the bird, עד שישחוט בסיבוב הגלגל, and that's kosher שחיטה, because that is actually your power. That's a kosher שחיטה. Got it? So the water wheel is removed. This is a real lever that you push with your hand or pedal with your feet is a kosher shahita manan shukhan writes. And so he writes there, the Bach writes and the Pri Hadash and the Knesset Gadah writes, Sha'afilu he seed a hakachet yado me'al gagal. What if I do this with the wheel, I get the wheel spinning and then I let go. But it still has like another 10 rotations and then it chops the animal's hand. It keeps going and it slaughters. It's still a kosher slaughtering because it's called my power. When I, my power is everything as much as the wheel spins from when my power goes into it, even if it keeps going. Even though it keeps spinning around when I took my hand off. It's all called your power. Because all the spills, all the spins, the rotations are from your power. So it would be kosher. But according to this, so too, I press the button and the machine keeps going and making tons of matzahs. Why should that not be kosher? Ulam, however, it's a different than the case of the wheel and the pedal. You cannot have it in a windy place. If you're in a, also, in the, the wind is also blowing on the wheel, now it's two powers. It's my power, my velocity, and the wind velocity. If you do this in a windy place, the wind is helping. That would not be called power of a man. Now it's the wind, and the shikhita is pasul. It would not be kosher. So it only works if you're not in a windy place, this wheel idea. If your hand is on the wheel, yes, even in a windy place. If you let go, and now it keeps going, and the wind is also pushing it, no. It has to be 100% completely your power. And so therefore, gamkin so too, when you press the button, yes, that was your power, but it's being mixed with another power. What power? The power of electricity. Shehu zerem zram, zerem zram. How do you pronounce the the electric current? Zerem ashma. The electric current is also helping, and so it's not called your power. Understand what we're saying here? So don't compare it to the spinning of the wheel, shaita. It's less removed because the power of the electric current is not your power. Okay, fine. That's why you would be more strict by matzah with a machine, anything with a machine. You would be more strict with a machine and say, no, the button is not called your power. This applies to anything. I want to have a machine that slaughters animals also, right? Anything that you need a person to do, or I want to have a, I don't know, a button that blows shofar. I'm not sure that's a good example. A button that does anything. You say, no, buttons with electric currents are not you. It's a little bit you, but it's also the electric current that's flowing. Okay. We do find a lot of great rabbis. We do find a lot of poskim that say, no, the button would be kosher. So it's mahloke. The, the We just brought the opinion says the button would not be kosher. Now we have people that say, no, the button is called Kawah Gabra. It's good. Who holds this? Rabbi Abraham Te'umim in Chesed Abraham, and also Maharsham and Ahiyazid, Torah Rafael, Sevi Fromer, Hazon Ish, Hal Sevi, and other poskim hold that the button would be called your work and it would be kosher. Okay. Let's see what the bottom star is. Uh, okay, let's skip that. Okay, so there he says now, if you are in a tough circumstance, 
you're in a country, let's say Ukraine right now. It's a war zone. Maybe you can't get a hold of handmade shmona matzah. Or you're, someone's very poor. They can't afford the extra money for their handmade matzah. Shout out to the hak. It's in a tough circumstance. They can't find handmade matzah. Done by people. It would appear that you can rely on the other post king will hold the person pushing a button is called the power of the person. And even according to them, you would be able to make the beracha al achila matza. It wouldn't be beracha la batala. If you add in and rely on what the Onig Yom Tov says, well, this is what he says. So this Sefer Onig Yom Tov says, yes, it's Mitzvah to have Onig Shmura uh, Matzah. Uh, but just, if you don't have Shemur Matzah in, in the place you are, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have any Matzah at all. It's not all or nothing. Then you should eat Matzah. That's not Shemurah. The Torah is not saying either have Shemur Matzah or don't eat Matzah. He says there's two separate mitz mitzvot in the Torah. One mitzvah, eat Matzah. The second mitzvah, make the Matzah Shemurah. Make it sure it's watched. He says they're not, re- they're not codependent on each other. You can fulfill, you should fulfill both of the mitzvot. But if you lose the shimura aspect, the watching aspect, you should still fulfill the other aspect. And you get half credit. That's what he writes. About kiyam mitzat, asya shalakatuv, tokilu matzot. You can still get credit for eating matzah, even if it's not shimura. Okay. And he says, similar to this, the Avni Nezid writes, this is unbelievable. He writes, I only have egg matzah in my house. I don't even have regular matzah. Just egg matzah. Forget handmade. Forget machine shimura. Only egg. You got to eat kazayit of egg matzah. It says you have to eat matzah. You're right. You're not fulfilling the part of the bazooka that's lechem oni, but the bazooka is not all or nothing. So you lost lechem oni, poor man's bread. You lost shmora matzah. You can still eat matzah. Do what you can. Okay. And he ends off and he says, If you look at the sefer, Eret Sevi from her, She'af b'matzah she'ena mishumen al shemizva, en b'hashash b'rechal batala, even if you have not shmur matzah, it's all you have, it's not a berachal batala. You can still make the blessing during the seder, al achilat matzah. Why? It's an interesting logic. Mishum sheyesh ba kesat mitzvah. It's partial mitzvah. Kemo hatzi kazayit matzah. It's like if you would say, I'm eating matzah, but I'm only having half a kazayit. You're supposed to eat a kazayit. Of a, let's say an ounce of matzah. I don't want to eat an ounce. I'm only going to have half an ounce. Well, you're choosing to not do the... You should have half of, let's say, half of a matzah or a whole matzah during the seder. No, I'm only having three bites. Do you tell the guy, don't make the blessing? That's the question. He says, you should make the blessing still. You get half credit, but you make the blessing. So just like if someone physically eats half a kazait matzah, he makes the blessing in quantity... He says, this is called half of a matzah in quality. Interesting correlation. So I'm going to read his words. If you have egg matzah or nashmur matzah, it's half kazait in quality. And see, just like if you have half of a quantity, you make it a blessing. So too, if you have half the quality, you should make a blessing. Interesting logic. But the Chamadiyah says at the end, I'm not sure about this. He says, really, maybe you shouldn't say the blessing for half kazait. And he says, go check another siman for this. And so I'm not saying halakhtili to say beracha. This rabbi holds you say the blessing on half kazait. Chamadiyah says, no, maybe don't. Maybe don't say the blessing. Because Chamadiyah Yosef was very strict on beracha al He says, when it comes safek, don't make a beracha. But still the logic works that you're using you're losing you're losing that commandment but you still have the mitzvah to eat matzah 
And so he says, therefore, if you need to, you can rely on it and eat the machine matzah. And he finishes and he says, Umikomakom, Misvah Minamuhad, the best misvah, the most preferable, the Ishtadels to really try the Sikh Matzah Shimurash al Abudat Yad, to find handmade matzah, Shina Asit Pidea Nashimi de Shamaim, Habakiim Behalakha, that was made by God fearing people who know the laws, that sit by Yede Hobat, Misat Matzah, Balala Rishon, the Hola de Ot. So that you can be comfortable that you fulfill the matzah mitzvah of matzah on the seder night, one hundred percent according to everyone. Ulam, however, be yeter hag and the rest of the holiday, besides for the first night, gam mishe ochel matzah shemura rashi leakel leechol matzah michuna hakisha lepesach. The rest of the holiday, do what you want. You want to eat machine matzah. Eat machine matzah. The mitzvah to eat shemura matzah is only for the seder night. What do I do myself? I don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on matzah. It's expensive stuff, the shemura, the handmade stuff. Everything handmade is expensive in any industry, right? By the way, people complain, ah, the matzah is so expensive. Look at the price of everything right now. And If I want to hand make a watch, if I want to buy a handmade watch, it's going to be expensive. A handmade car is going to be expensive. A handmade anything is expensive. A handmade suit is going to be expensive. So, of course, the handmade matzah is expensive. You're paying for, if I, I'll send the video. There's like 30 guys involved in the matzah making process. They have to be paid. Fine. So, what I do is I buy enough handmade shawana matzah for the two seder nights for all the adults there. Figure each person, even if I want to be generous, will have two pieces of matzah, let's say. And then for the rest of the holiday, I buy the shmora machine. It's the next step down. It's you, the Yehuda Matzahs. It's still Matzah Shemura, which I don't even need. I can even go less than that if I want to. But it's cheaper. Shemura machine or regular machine Matzah. And for Holom Wed, Egg Matzah even. Egg Matzah, of course, Faradim is kosher. Egg Matzah. And for the kids. You don't have to spend tons of money. I know some people that only buy the handmade Shemura for the whole holiday. You're spending a lot of money. You don't have to do this. Buy the best Matzah for the two Seder nights. The best. Handmade, spend the money. The rest of the week, go cheap. This is what you do. But if you need to, and or someone, if you go to someone's house and they don't have the handmade, don't say anything. Don't don't make a mahlokit. The machine made would be kosher if that's where your situation you're in for Pesach. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.